Hello, this is Cat Simon Painting. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Before I go any further, excuse me if I sound a little odd. My voice is a little hoarse and croaky. I've been ill for um, about a week. <laughs> um, but I am feeling better today, and I wanted to kit up Gnome Carolers. If you want to see any more details on this painting than I'm going to go into today, you can go and check out my unboxing video that I did a couple of weeks ago now. Um, that's available on the channel and then come back and watch me kit up. This video is going to be more of a kitten chat, my version of a whippin chat. Um, I tend to do these chatty videos more where I'm kitting up or kitting down. But just to reintroduce you to this, uh, Gnome Carolers is a 47.9 centimetre by 42.6 centimetre round diamond painting from Diamond Art Club based on the art of Susan Wingett. There's a little picture of it for you there. And this is my kind of snack size piece that I got for myself to work on in December so that I could do a Christmas diamond painting without doing a huge one that would kind of take over the last couple of months of the year because I do have one in my stash that I intend to do but I, I need to start it earlier in the year it's um it's quite a large one from Diamond Art Club with large paintings I tend to do them in bits and bobs you know I'll, I'll do it for a little bit and then I'll have a break <laughs> um and then I'll come back to it so I need to allow a few months really so this one I'm expecting to work up fairly quickly it's not going to be very very quick because it's quite confetti heavy um particularly areas like these trees um and just little bits and bobs you know there's not massive areas of color blocking but at the same time it is quite small and there is a fair amount of scope for color blocking so i'm thinking i can hopefully get this done in a week to 10 days um take a break from my current whip which is house on a cliff from diamond art club which i also kitted up recently on the channel and i'm really 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 enjoying working on part of me doesn't want to step away from it actually <laughs> but i want to do this while it's seasonal um and i did buy it to work on it this year so i'm going to get this kitted up today and then i'm going to start work on this probably later on today when i finish my current row of house on a cliff so here it is just to give you another little look at it but I'm actually going to put this aside because we're really focusing on the kitting up today. So the first thing I want to do is use my guillotine to sort out my sticker sheet. Let me just try and flatten that out a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to separate this out and then I will keep the large sticker. Firstly, it will be in my storage box while I'm working on the painting um, and then once I am done with the painting, it will sit upstairs in a notepad that I've got set aside ready to be a logbook one day if I ever get around to it. Okay, so I'll put that to the side and I've got my stickers here. 41 colours to kit up today. So normally that wouldn't take too long. However, I am anticipating static in the drills today. If you watched my last kitting up video, House on a Cliff, um, I had real problems with static in the drills. Diamond Art Club went through a period of manufacture where um, for some reason there was a lot more static in the drills. I don't know what changed. They say they have now changed that. So newer kits are hopefully starting to come through um, that don't have the problem. But this is from that period. And I have seen on Diamond Art Club's Facebook group, um, their VIP Facebook group that you can join if you've purchased directly from them. Um, a lot of people who've kitted this up have said that they've had problems. So, um, what am I going to do first? Let me get myself set up with some boxes, first of all. And then I'll talk about what I've already done kind of preemptively to deal with static and what I've got on hand today to hopefully help me further. Okay, I've just done a little bit of shuffling around um, between these storage cases off camera. Well, I've counted up what was in here and I had 40. Um, so I've added an extra one to make it 41. Um, as you can see, if you're not familiar with this storage system already, these are all different sizes. They range from very large through to very small. Um, so what I'm doing is I've got another box just off camera here that's got extra boxes. Um, extra storage boxes in it 
Um, so if, as I'm going through the painting, it makes sense to switch to different size boxes, I can do that from there. Okay, so that's there. Right, let me go get some drills from the freezer. <laughs> that's your first clue. Um, and we will see what kind of state they're in. So, I have had these freezing for about 24 hours. Before I did that, another tip that I took from the Facebook group was to pop a pinhole through to these bags. Can you just see there's a little tiny hole there where I just literally pushed a push pin through. The idea being that moisture combat static, so I kind of wanted condensation in the bags and the push pin before freezing, I'm hoping will have helped. This first little trio of drills I've bought out seem to be moving around their bags quite well. So cautiously optimistic, hope they're not too wet, we shall find out. If I run into problems, I also now have static guard, well, anti-static spray. I think I should have got an aerosol spray, whereas this is more of a squirty spray and it's a bit too wet. And the one time I tried to use it so far, I didn't have much luck. I also got rubbing alcohol, which is um, another one I've seen people recommending as really helping even with this level of static. The idea being you kind of dip a, um, a cotton bud, as we call them here. I think you guys in America, where a lot of my viewers are, call them Q-tips. Um, dip that and swirl it amongst the drills. Um, and that will dry off really quickly because of it being rubbing alcohol. Um, but I guess introduces moisture and maybe reduces static that way. I'm not really sure on the science of it. But anyway, that is what we've got. So let's have a look at these first few drills. Um, okay. So as usual, I have a large tray that I am going to just do my kitting up over. And because I don't want to bring all of the drills out of the freezer because then they'll lose the benefit of having been in there. Um, I'm just going to have to guess which storage containers suit the size of drill bag best. Um, because normally with this style, I'll work from the largest bags to the smallest or vice versa. So we'll see. We'll see how we're getting on. So, 471. <coughs> and we're off. Let's see how this one goes. I'll be so happy if this goes easily because I'm really not in the mood, still not feeling amazing. Well, that was perfect. Now, I don't know if there was static in these particular drills, but that was an encouraging start. So let's get these three done and then I'll pull a few more out and see what's going on with them. Nice colours, aren't they? I should maybe be putting these in smaller containers. It's, oh, it's hard to work it out doing it this way. Maybe I'll try and be brave and keep more out next time because these drills are perfect. Oh, I've cut that off before I've got myself a container for it. That's a bit silly. 986. Sorry as ever if the camera picks up any noises in the background. We're still living opposite a building site at the moment, unfortunately. Um, they're building some houses just opposite us. So it can be a bit noisy here in the daytime, but normally it doesn't get picked up on camera. Right, let me get some more drills. Okay, coming in here with my big bags of drills. I'm just checking how many of these are duplicates. I can only see one that's got two bags, so let's start there. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'll keep these out for now. I'm just sort of experimenting, you know. So, these ones can go in one of the big containers. And these ones should all be okay in slightly smaller ones. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need many big containers at all. Um, yeah, so 
my week has not been a good one. <laughs> I um, So I started off last Tuesday with just a hint of a sore throat and I was like, oh, what's going on there? Um, I did a COVID test because um, I know that sore throats can be quite a common early indicator of COVID. Um, I tell you what, there is condensation inside these bags and all of these drills so far are great. Oh, if I've, if I've, you know, got the, the knack of this, I'm going to be so happy. Um, yeah, so I did that. And then the next day I woke up and my throat was bad and it just kept getting worse. I have always tended towards, um, tonsillitis, things like that. Um, and I kind of thought, oh God, well, that's what I've got. This, this max of tonsillitis. So I'm just moving things around in this other tray to make things fit. Um, because my throat just felt, you know, when every time you swallow, it's just so painful. So I had slight cold symptoms and this awful sore throat. I was taking, you know, all the painkillers and throat medications and things I could get access to. And it was just taking the edge off slightly. And I was, sorry if this is a bit grim, but I was like looking down my throat with a torch because that's what I was used to do when I had tonsillitis as a child to check if I needed antibiotics. And I could see that my throat was so, so swollen. Like it almost looked like it was closing up. Horrible. Um... So that was like the Wednesday and then the Thursday, it was a little better, um, but not great. And I was starting to feel really wiped out because I wasn't sleeping well because of the pain and just generally feeling ill. You know, I was waking up and then literally having to lie there at night until the painkillers that I'd taken all kicked in because there was no chance of sleeping otherwise. So Thursday, throat was a bit better, um, but absolutely wiped out. Um, then Friday, which is um, when I sort of started to think I was recovering, I was, you know, I felt much more normal. I felt my throat wasn't sore. I was feeling absolutely wiped out, though. I was like, oh, fair enough. I'm just really tired because I've had this illness and I've been ill. A good sleep and I'll feel much better. Ah, that's the first one that's actually had some stuff that's still in the bag. So I'm going to try blowing in there to add a bit more moisture. Shaking them all around. Okay, that one's a little bit stuck. So should we try the... Um, I could force them out, but I want to, you know, try see what works. So I'm going to try dipping my cotton bud in a little bit of this ooh, alcohol and see what that does for us. Let's see. I'm just kind of wiping that around the back, trying to come into contact with all the drills. Oop. <laughs> Knock that one out. Well, they're coming out easy enough. That's that's not terrible now. Now, the question is, were the other bags that I opened always fine? <laughs> um, and this is the first one that had a bit of static. Or were the others staticky before and it had fixed them? And that one was just particularly staticky. We shall see. Um, yeah. And then Saturday, I thought, oh, I'll be, I'll be, 
I'll be better when I wake up in the morning on Saturday. And I was hoping I would be because um, it was my son's football. And then he was going away for the night to his grandparents and I was going to have an evening with my husband. But Saturday, I woke up with really quite aggressive cold symptoms. You know, like really, really, really runny nose, having to blow my nose a lot, feeling really stuffy. Um, so, yeah, that kind of crushed that hope and dream. <laughs> um, so that was Saturday. I was absolutely full of cold, really congested, a bit miserable with that. And then Sunday, the cold symptoms were still there, but starting to subside. But then in the evening, I started to get a headache. And then Monday, my head was killing me. And it was like this really unusual headache, like I haven't really had before. Um, um, where it was sort of, it was the base of my neck and the back of my head. Um, and there was this constant dull ache there. But if I moved or like lowered my head or turned my head or anything like that, I'd get these spikes of pain. Like really quite intense. Um, so that was pretty horrible, I've got to be honest, on Monday. And I was also having issues with my blood pressure playing up. It had gone really high. So I went to see the doctor and all that. But, you know, they, they said it's fine, just monitor it. I felt really miserable, I've got to be honest. And then Tuesday, yesterday was the first day where I was like, yeah, I actually do feel a fair bit better now. Because my head still ached, but not as much. You know, the painkillers would take it away, <laughs> rather than me taking all the painkillers I could get, and it's still hurting. Um, so, yeah. And then today I've woken up and I no longer have a headache. I'm just a little bit stuffy still, as you can hear. So that has been my week. And throughout it, I haven't slept very well. So I've been very, very tired. Like Monday, which was probably the worst day of all of them, because my head was so bad. I kept falling asleep. And you know, like, I, I don't really nap. So I know I'm ill if I'm taking naps. And whenever my head any went anywhere near a pillow, I was out. <laughs> but it probably helped because, you know, today I'm feeling, well, yesterday I was feeling better and today I'm feeling better again. So that has been my week. It's been a really strange one. I don't remember ever having, oh, this one's still quite staticky, ever having a virus quite like that before. Um, that kept coming in phases, you know, I'd think I was getting better and then something else would start. So now I don't feel, you know, that confident in case it starts up again. I'm just going to blow into this again. This is the first bag that I would say looks really, really, really staticky still. But blowing has helped. It's reduced it quite a lot. Now I'm going to do rubbing alcohol. Because to be honest, <laughs> much as I said my headache's gone, blowing into these bags is kind of making it pound a bit. <laughs> so I'm just giving that a good old stir. Yeah, it's been strange. I've tested myself for COVID every single day on um, a lateral flow test, which is like a rapid test, I think other countries call them. I don't have access to anything else. We, we can't get PCR tests in the UK anymore without paying out quite a lot of money that I can't really spare right before Christmas. Um, so that's all I can do really. And then my son came back from his weekend away on Sunday, not feeling great. He had a bit of a sore throat and cough. Um, yeah, he wasn't too bad. 
we decided to keep him off on Monday and to be honest he acted most of the day like he was probably okay and then Tuesday I thought he was going to go in but in the morning he didn't feel great so he did stay off and to be honest I'm just I'm not that worried about him being off at the moment because there's so much nasty stuff in schools it's like if he does just have a cold or, or a mild virus now I don't mind him staying home to rest up from that rather than going to school where he might catch something worse so yeah and then last night my husband started to feel a bit ill which I feel really bad about. I mean, I can't help it if I've given it to him, but he, um, yeah, that one's a bit clumpy. That's the worst one we've had so far. He had a slight headache last night, and the thing with my husband is he doesn't really talk about it if he doesn't feel well. So if he mentions that he doesn't feel well, he really doesn't feel well. I'm going to go get a dryer sheet for that one. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> and the thing is, today, my husband, because he, um, works in um our local university today he is doing interviews with prospective students for next year so he needs to be on his game for that and then tonight he is traveling to birmingham to go to a concert um for the cure which yeah it's one of those things it's really not ideal i wish he didn't have to go um, he can't really not go because he has all the tickets. Um, he bought the tickets and he's going with my sister and her husband and her two sons. So at the very least, he has to go to Birmingham to take them tickets. Um, or I do if he's not up to it. And then, yeah, go in the concert and he'll stay masked the whole time, um, even in the concert to make sure he doesn't give anything to anyone. But yeah, it's it's just, it's all a bit of a worry and I think we're about ready to, um, you know, all feel better, please. It's been a while since all of us have been healthy. Um, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> there you go. That's what it's like at the moment, isn't it? Soft in the way in December, and I think a lot of us, our bodies are very tired out by COVID infections earlier in the year, and that's not helping anything either. Right, that's enough about me being ill. <laughs> One thing I thought I should mention is um, if you use other forms of social media as well as YouTube, um, I do link these in my description each each time I post a video, but in case you don't see that, um, I have, as well as this YouTube, an Instagram and a TikTok. Both of them are just called Cat's Diamond Paintings, so I should be easy to find. Um, and I just wanted to invite you to check those out if you haven't already. Instagram, I tend to just update with pictures of projects, like after I've finished a section of a project, I'll, I'll pop a picture on there. So you'll get um, generally more up to date, I'll pick that up afterwards, um, ideas of what I'm working on. At the moment, it's not very up to date because I haven't done much diamond painting, let alone updated anything because I've been ill. <laughs> um, but I'll get back on with that soon. TikTok, I do short videos which are either ASMR which is where um, you can just really focus on the like satisfying pops and clicks um, that you hear with diamond painting. Or I do like um, sped up sections of diamond painting to music. So either way, it's all about just um, like satisfying, you know, <laughs> like scratching that itch kind of videos, if you know what I mean, which hopefully people will enjoy. So yeah, do check those out if you haven't already. Um, um, I must try and mention them now and again. Because <laughs> I always forget normally. I don't want to be someone who's constantly plugging myself. But at the same time, I forget and hardly ever do it. <laughs> and I am trying to build all of these platforms. Okay. This isn't going too badly, is it? I probably shouldn't have got quite so many of these out of the freezer though because they're starting to um, 
well, they're drying off. So I'm worried I'll lose some of the impact that the freezer has had. I think with the next bunch, like it's too late for these, but with the next bunch, I'll just take them out a little bit at a time. So three, 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 eight, one, eight. So last time I did a chatty video was kitting up the house on the cliff. And I was talking to you about what I've been doing since my previous last chatty video. <laughs> um, and I got up to kind of the weekend before my son's birthday. So I thought I'd pick up there, even though that's actually quite a few weeks ago now. <laughs> but that was obviously a big thing for us in November was my son's birthday. So, yeah, his birthday was on a Tuesday. So he had to go to school, worse luck. <laughs> I used to hate going to school on my birthday. As an adult, when I was working before having my son, I would always take my birthday off. <laughs> and my parents were always really horrified. Like they thought that was like really decadent. But it's like, well, I'm just using my annual leave. <laughs> I had like um, about six weeks of annual leave to take each year in that job. So you know, it was just one day. Anyways, um, so. He, we got up early and opened all his presents. Um, we have a tradition that goes back to when I was a child um, where I would go get into my parents' bed to open presents and he does the same with us. We really like doing that. So we got him a few presents. We got him like a book set. Um, we got him a subscription to a comic we thought he'd like, although actually he doesn't seem to be getting on with it very well, but that's okay. It was an experiment. Um, we got him some clothes and some games, um, you know, all the usual suspects. Um, he's fortunate to come from a big family who will buy him presents as well. So he had lots of nice things from family as well. Like my parents got him a thing I'd found called a monocular, which is like a sort of basic level, um, like binoculars, but one. Um, so it's easier to hold for him and it's just got a, um, a set 10 times zoom. You can't zoom in or out or anything. Um, and it's good for him because he's really into wildlife. Um, so like if you go on a walk or something, he can use it to spot animals that are far away, um, plants that are far away, all of that kind of thing. And like if we go to a zoo or a wildlife park, he'll love being able to see things up close. So that was really good. And then his other grandparents, my in-laws got him a football kit that he really wanted. Um, so yeah, he got lots of lovely things and was really spoiled, I would say. Um, he's a very lucky boy, but yeah, he deserves it. <laughs> um, and then he went to school and then we both picked him up from school. My husband was able to not work that afternoon and evening. Um, we went over to um, a place near us that has pool tables. This was all at his request. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a sip of water. So yeah, we went over to play pool. Um, oh, there's a large one still there. I don't really need that. Um, met one of his friends who also likes to play pool and they sometimes go and play together so we'd arrange to meet up with him um, and after that he had football training for his team that's always on a Tuesday evening so he needed to go to that as normal but he enjoys that so that's fine we took along some cupcakes for him to give out to his friends afterwards and then we came home and like played with all of his new things and had a takeaway. So it was his choice whether I cooked one of his favorite meals or we had a takeaway. He wanted a takeaway. Unfortunately, the place that he actually chose wasn't open again. <laughs> it was this nice Italian place that does like proper Italian style pizzas. And he wanted to have takeaway from there for his birthday last year and they weren't open because they're not open on Mondays. 
And then this year I'd looked it up and I'm like, oh, they're open on Tuesdays. Great. We can do that when he asked for it. <laughs> and it turned out they were only open Tuesday lunchtime. Oh, so that was a shame. We'll have to try again next year. <laughs> um, but he took it well and chose somewhere else. We ended up getting burgers from a place called Philly's Burgers that he likes. So, yeah. We had a lovely evening, just spending time together, all three of us, and it was it was really good, very enjoyable. <coughs> and then on the weekend, we had his party. So I will say we don't normally go all out for his party like we did this year. Um. The last time he had a party was when he was six, and this was his ninth birthday. Um, and his sixth birthday was just having, like, five or six friends over at home and party games and stuff here. This year, we thought, because he's missed so much of being able to do this kind of thing over the last couple of years, and because he's nine now, you know, he's getting a lot older, he's sort of getting to that point where he's not going to want sort of a childlike birthday party anyway. So we actually suggested to him um, that he had a party and suggested doing Laser Quest, which is something that he discovered he enjoys doing. If you don't know what it is, um, it's often called like Laser Combat or um, Laser Tag. Basically, you all run around in the dark wearing these things over you that have um, panels that people can shoot with lasers and everyone's got these laser guns and then it records your scores. I don't know. I didn't play. I sat outside watching everyone's bags and things. Um, but it sounded very funny. There was a lot of shrieking going on in there. I just think to grab more drills. To be honest, most of these bags now don't have many drills in and they don't need a big container, but I'm just going to stick with the bigger containers because it's easier. So, um, so yeah, they had two games of that. Um, and there were, how many kids were there? I think there were nine kids, including my son. Um, and my husband went in there as well. And then one of his friends... Um, to get the colour off that one. I'm not really concentrating properly. Um, one of his friends, his dad came along too because we know him and his son and just occasionally has some extra sensory needs so he wanted to be on hand in case his son struggled with any of it even though he was keen to play um, and that was actually really handy as it turned out to have an extra grown up pull around. Right, I'm going to blow into these ones. <sighs> See, the blowing trick does work, but I find it quite hard to do because I'm a little bit out of puff because I have this cough and cold. So I'm just finding it easier to stir around with the um, rubbing alcohol, which does seem to be helping when there is a little bit of static. Um... So, yeah, we did that. And then, so what we had done, we'd booked that. And the latest we could book that was for three o'clock. Gosh. Hardly any in there. Um, and then we'd booked to go to um, Frankie's and Benny's downstairs in the same leisure complex for dinner at 430 because we couldn't, you know, like, you can't really go too early, can you? Or none of the kids are going to eat. So then we had a bit of time to kill in between. So we went into the arcade. And that was a bit stressful because <laughs> nine kids all wanting to go on different things. No concept of how expensive it is. You know, we sort of thought, oh, everyone will get one or two goes on things. But it was actually really hard to keep track of. And we kind of regretted that bit. And we're ever so grateful that our friend was there as well. Otherwise, we probably would have lost a few kids. Um, 
So we did that. And then we went over to Frankie and Benny's and had the kids menu. Um, obviously the grown-ups didn't. But yeah, we we did it that way because we'd looked at the party package that they had at Laser Quest, which would have been a lot easier. But it costs the same amount for us to have the party package there and have sort of, you know, a cold sandwichy meal, which my son would not have enjoyed. That's not his sort of thing as it did to just pay to do laser tag and then pay for the kids' menus in Frankie and Benny's. So we felt like we were being quite clever at the time, probably had some regrets when it was all quite hard. <laughs> and like, we were definitely very relieved when it was over, but we got through it and he had an amazing time. And I think his friends did too. So, you know, all's well that ends well. <laughs> Yeah, so that was quite a few weeks ago now. I always get quite um, emotional really around his birthday. Just remembering back to that time, you know, and having him and he's our only child. So obviously it was our first time going through all of it. Yeah, tricky times, but you know, good memories thinking back on those early weeks. I remember bringing him home from the hospital and just, we were just so happy. Like the first week or two when he was very newbornish and mainly sleeping um, it, and everything was easy. We just like, we knew that that was probably the calm before the storm, but we were just so happy and enjoying it. It was really lovely. I always look back on that time so, so fondly. Obviously, I look back on all the stages fondly, but some are easier than others. And that time just felt really pure, you know, even though I was recovering from the birth because the birth didn't go that well. Um, I got induced and, and then needed assistance to get him out. And my recovery period took quite a long time because I was getting infections. And yeah, <laughs> that that side of things wasn't great. But yeah. It was some, um, you know, happy memories thinking back to the start of that, that stage of our life, really. Oh, that drill's escaped, even after all my best efforts to get it in there. And since then, we have had a new member of the family. We've had a niece. Um, I mentioned a while ago... I think it was in the house on a cliff putting up when I was catching you all up on what we've been doing that we'd looked after um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's daughter because they were due to have another baby soon. So, oh, it's just spilled drills everywhere. These little packs, by the way, are still retaining more static. It's manageable at the moment. But they're not as good as the bigger packs were. And like I say, I don't know if that is how they were at the start. I kind of feel like the um, the freezer trick with the pinhole and stuff does seem to have worked fairly well. Because, like, from the descriptions I've seen from people on Facebook, they were having an absolute nightmare to kit this up. And, you know, some of the colours have been... A little trickier than others but none of them have been an absolute nightmare and certainly it's been nothing like as bad as house on a cliff so i will try that pushing a pin through and then freezing again for sure because this has been relatively pain-free compared to what i was thinking it might be you see these little packs like to Cling on more, it seems, sometimes. Yeah, so we have a new niece born on the 28th um, of November by Caesarean section. And they are all doing well, just finding their feet as a, a new family of four. Looking forward to meeting her over Christmas. They are um, doing the very sensible thing of not opening up to visitors 
and having us all crowding to meet the new baby. Um, they're having some people over like parents for help. Um, but yeah, that's a bit different. So we will meet her at Christmas because we're all spending Christmas together this year. We always alternate which family to go to. And we were with my family last year, so with uh, my husband's family this year. And anyway, having all been ill, we couldn't have gone and met her regardless. You know, can you imagine going to see a newborn feeling as poorly as I have? So, um, yeah, that all went well. Um, I know my son's really excited to meet her. I'm hoping he's doing all right at school today. It's his first day back in. And I don't think he'll be feeling ill, but he does have quite a cough still. And I forgot to give him any cough medicine before he went to school. Like, I know cough medicine doesn't necessarily do that much. But I think, like, it doesn't cure the root cause of a cough. But it can still make you feel better by easing the coughing, right? Particularly if the cough isn't horrendous yet. You can kind of get in there and add a bit of lubrication and stop yourself coughing as much and then that does help because you know coughs are one of those things the more you cough the more you cough because everything gets irritated so if you can stop yourself coughing it helps anyways <laughs> point being I forgot to do anything sensible like that this morning so I did say to him if you're struggling you can always ask the school to give me a call and I can bring some cough medicine up I haven't had a call as yet so hopefully that's a good sign <coughs> It's um, Christmas jumper day at school today. So that was a big part of why he was keen to go back in, I think. <laughs> He'd quite happily stay at home otherwise. He likes school. He just, he likes being at home more. You know, he doesn't have any issues being there. And actually we had his parents evening last week, thankfully, before I got ill. Um, and, you know, the teacher said he's doing great. He's, he's where he needs to be with everything. Um, he's polite and well behaved in class all the stuff you want to hear so that was really lovely and he's got friends and yeah so he, he has no problems at school he just really likes being at home and playing with his own things and you know like any self-respecting child <laughs> so a couple of days at home like the last couple of days where he's not felt really poorly and rubbish um but sort of just ill enough to justify being off. <laughs> he's he's quite happy with that. <laughs> but yeah, today they've got their Christmas lunch. So they get a special Christmas lunch. Um, so for him, it will be roast turkey um, and like a roast dinner with some extra trimmings compared to the normal roasts they do for Christmas dinner. Like I think they do pigs in blankets, which... I don't know if that's a British thing or not. Pigs in blankets is like a little sausage with bacon wrapped around it. Um, so yeah, if you didn't know that, that's what that is. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of dryer sheet in that container. And they got to wear Christmas jumpers if they wanted to, um, rather than their normal school uniform. last of the big ones as I say most of these containers are like nowhere near full because it's such a small kit I just didn't need containers that big but I don't need like I don't need to conserve them for any other kits I'm not going to be kitting anything up before this is done anything else up before this is done and I don't really like using the small ones any more than I have to just because I find them a bit fiddlier Right, let me get some more drills from the freezer. Last few bags here. <coughs> yeah, so he's got that today. And then tomorrow they're going to the pantomime. So again, he definitely doesn't want to miss that. Pantomimes, I suspect, are another British thing. <laughs> so I'll just try and explain. They are a kind of play that you go see around Christmas and it'll be usually based on like a fairy tale like Cinderella or something like that. Um, and 
it's actually really hard to explain because it's it's kind of part comedy it's part formula like there'll be um certain things that always happen like someone will say um you know oh yes he did and we'll all say oh no he didn't or something like that it's really hard to explain actually but basically it's like a fun kid-friendly play that us brits like to go to before christmas so he's going with school which is good i mean actually my husband and i would love to go to the pantomime but we probably wouldn't have gone because we're not really doing theater type stuff since covid um Whereas I wouldn't stop him going with a school when they're going, if you see what I mean. And it was also cheaper because um, the school just asked for like £8 towards the ticket. So yeah, it's nice for him to go with his friends anyway. Oh, these last few are going to annoy me now, aren't they? After me complimenting them on, on doing so well. <laughs> I mean, they're really not horrendous still, but in an ideal world, there wouldn't be any static. So by that measure, they're a little bit annoying. Did anyone make any purchases over Black Friday and Cyber Monday? I did. I was suckered right into the Diamond Art Club sales, as you can imagine, because you can tell from my channel how much I like their products. They released a hundred new kits on Black Friday, um, which they then had available with a 30% discount. So it was a little bit hard to resist. <laughs> I, um, I got three kits. I had been saving for Black Friday. This is sort of, you know, why I've tried to not buy as much the last few months. So I was expecting to spend money, although I did inevitably spend a bit more than I had wanted to. <clears throat> so I got three kits in the morning um, when early access opened and then later on in the day I went back and bought a mystery kit that had been released a couple of weeks earlier using the 30% discount they had for Black Friday and then on Cyber Monday they released another 25 kits Oh, and there were more ones that I liked there. And then they had a buy one, get one 50% off deal for Cyber Monday. So I got two more kits. <laughs> oh, I'm like Diamond Painting Anonymous over here. And then they carried on doing new releases last week. And um, on Saturday, they brought out Cat Bookshelf. Um, by Randall Spangler, which is a painting I've wanted for a while, so I had to get that. It wasn't limited edition, but it was um, it, it was going to be popular. I knew it was going to be popular, and it sold out, so I didn't want to wait on getting that. But I used um, points that I had accrued. So Diamond Art Club have this reward scheme. You get like um, 10 or 15%, depending on what level you're at, of each purchase back in points. And then you can use that against future purchases. So I only paid for shipping for that. Oh, there's a big one there that I missed. We don't need that. Um, yeah. So I am trying to patiently wait for all of those. They're all still unshipped at the moment. Um, Diamond Art Club got absolutely slammed with orders um and it is taking them a while to catch up they've said that they hope to have them all on the way by tomorrow <coughs> so we'll see if they actually manage that because it seems like they still have a lot to ship i don't mind waiting for things at all i have been waiting patiently i think maybe for next year it might be wise for them to consider not carrying on with new releases straight after a big sale like this. Like if they hadn't planned to do releases on Wednesday and Saturday, then they would have been caught up already and they could have just picked up with those new releases this week, I would think. Because they said what happened was newer stock came into the warehouse and kind of blocked off the older things. So then they've ended up having to send 
kits that people ordered like just this Saturday ahead of kits that people are still waiting for from um, Black Friday. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm staying patient. I do find that a little bit annoying, um, although I understand the reasons for it. So yeah, I think, you know, I can see that I'm not the only one that feels that way. So um, maybe they might want to make changes in the future. Who knows? But hopefully they will arrive soon because the main reason that I'm bothered is that they have to come all the way to the UK and then, you know, it's it's December. We'll be away for Christmas. So I really need them to come before it gets too close to Christmas. <coughs> and as long as they do that, it'll be fine. So, yeah, hopefully they'll be on their way soon. I'm so pleased that this one hasn't been too bad. Once I've got these last bits kitted up, I think I might edit this video straight away to get it up because I haven't been able to post anything for ages because of being ill. Um, and then I'm going to get on with House on a Cliff because I've really missed my diamond painting. I haven't felt well enough most days. Ooh, my fancy iridescent drill. Um, I haven't felt well enough most days. Oh drill sticking to me where did I put that one because I haven't actually got these in any kind of order yet I'll rearrange them when I'm all done um yeah so yeah that's my plan for today to do that and then finish the row of house on a cliff I'm on and then try and tear myself away from it to work on gnome carolers. Because I know gnome carolers will be really fun too. Because I don't want to leave it any later to start gnome carolers in case I don't get it done for Christmas. And honestly, there's no real reason why I need to get it done for Christmas. I, I just would like to. Because I like to work on seasonal paintings when they're seasonal. I just, I know I won't, you know, I'd prefer to have it done before Christmas. Have it there available to look at before Christmas rather than finishing up afterwards. If I can't, then it's not the end of the world. Because at the end of the day, if I'm, you know, hankering to work on a different painting, I probably will. Um, but yeah. It should be perfectly manageable. And this is only my third whip on the go at the moment. <laughs> If you've been around for a while, I've previously had trouble where I've just had too many whips on the go and I've not been enjoying all of them and then it's felt a bit overwhelming. Um, but yeah, I've only got, as of whenever I start this, Gnome Carolers, House on a Cliff and the old Waterway Cottage, which is still trucking along. I started it in April. <laughs> Still not massively enjoying working on it. I bought it at a phase when um, Dreamer Designs were maybe struggling a bit more with their drill quality. I hear it's very much improved since then, um, as have the canvases. So I would like to purchase another one from them at some point. But right now, yeah, just struggling to get through that one. I think if I can get it done before April, so that I've done it within a year, I'll consider that a win. <laughs> And that sounds like miles away, doesn't it? But honestly, it takes me about a week to do a row. I probably have about four rows left. And it's not the one I ever most want to work on. And I'm definitely done working on it after one row and need a break. So <laughs> with all that in mind, I think realistically getting it done for April is, is the best I can aim for. And after that, I hope to start one from a different company. So what I tend to do is have a couple of diamond art clubs on the go and then one from a different company so that I've got a bit of variety in there and I'm not just doing diamond art club, however much I enjoy their canvases. Um, so I'm probably going to hopefully start maybe one of my diamond art studios at that point. So that's a good incentive because I'm looking forward to trying those. I do have unboxings on the channel for all of the ones I bought from them, all three. 
um, and I don't want to buy any more from them till I have worked on one really just in case I don't get on with them although I don't think that's going to be the case because the quality looks excellent and I see that they're very popular with other people they seem to me like a really good company to check out I'm just because I'm trying to be more restrained with my um, stash in general I don't think it makes sense to me to keep buying from a company I haven't actually tried yet trying to reduce the stash not add to it and that's not going terribly well at the moment as it is so <laughs> oh, almost there actually the first thing I need to do is sort some lunch because I haven't actually eaten today that's been a a problem the last few days as well because I've just had no energy so it's like what do we eat what's the easiest thing to make my husband's helped me out on the days when I've been you know feeling particularly grotty but he works you know he can't always do that so it's just been it's been a struggle I need to figure out something nice for me and my son to have tonight because my husband will be out so yeah, I haven't actually figured out what we can have to eat. I need to plan something. I might just let him have a treat tea, get out a pizza or something from the freezer, maybe even have a picnic tea in front of the TV together, just spend some time together. Feels a bit silly to sit around the dining table when it's just the two of us even if we do normally do family meals actually he'll probably be wanting to watch football he's he's following the world cup quite closely i'm not particularly following it because i'm not a big football fan um and i'm you know not a massive fan of this particular world cup for reasons i won't go into um but <laughs> it's kind of drawn me in a few times did i miscount or am i missing oh here they are I couldn't see my empty drill boxes for a moment. Um, so yesterday, he came bounding into my room to watch the three o'clock game, which was Spain versus Morocco. And um, he got bored and went off, and then he had to go to football training anyway. <coughs> but I'd got quite into it by that point, because I thought that Spain would probably beat Morocco quite easily um and they didn't it was nil all and it went nil all through extra time and by this point I'm like really rooting for Morocco <laughs> having probably never watched them play football before and not particularly caring about football and it went to penalties which is really stressful to watch if you don't know what penalties in football are you're lucky because it's stressful <laughs> um but yeah, Morocco won on penalties and I was actually, I was like in the kitchen cooking with it on my iPad. Yes! <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. My own team, Wales, went out, unfortunately, in the first round. They didn't manage to go through to the current round. So, yeah. But I'll support England as well. I mean, I live in England. Um... And obviously they're the next closest country to me. But yeah, it was the first time, I think in my lifetime, that Wales had qualified for the World Cup. So it was, yeah, it was a shame that they went out so early. But they did well to get there, you know. They're not one of the strongest teams, so what are you going to do? Their um, goalkeeper made a big mistake <laughs> in their last game which led to him getting sent off and then they were down one man and yeah it didn't end well from there <laughs> okay last color and it's an ab i love my ab's well i love them to look at not really to work with but <laughs> there you go so i'm gonna say with the caveat that I can't know exactly how bad these drills were before, that 
Pushing a hole through the bags before freezing them really appears to have helped. You've watched this whole thing and there were a few that I had to do extra things with, um, but nothing was terrible. Nothing was like I had to deal with last week with House on a Cliff. I think the um, rubbing alcohol has definitely helped as well, the swishing around the bags to collect them up. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That was so much less painful than I thought it might be. I've only put um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> dryer dryer sheets in a couple of them, um, and most of them are behaving very nicely, not sticking to the tubs. Yeah, happy with that. So. I'm going to get these organised in number order and then I'll be all done. It's nice to have a day where I don't feel rubbish <laughs> and I can just spend most of the day done painting. I've not really got anything I need to do now apart from some washing and feeding myself until I go pick up my son from school. Actually, that's a lie. I need to go to the vets to pick up some medicine for my cat, but I'm waiting for the car to defrost because it's very cold here and I can't find the antifreeze and I don't want to sit in a freezing cold car waiting for the ice to disperse. So I'm waiting until it hopefully gets a little bit warmer. I don't think it's supposed to get very warm today, um, <coughs> but hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer than it is at the moment at least. So, yeah, just editing and diamond painting all day. Sounds like a good day, doesn't it? <laughs> 11. This is the part where I always can't see them for looking. <laughs> I'm not doing so badly today. 15, 16. I'm just hoping I can fit them all in because I did use quite large containers compared to what I maybe needed to. 18, 19, 20, where's 20? See, if I think about it, I get stuck. <laughs> if I just go for it, I see them. Where's 21 and 22? Oh, come on, I must, yeah, I must have been looking right through it. Do you do that? Is that just me? <laughs> um, 24, 25, ah, that's not quite gonna fit. Mm, ish. Um, I think I'll need to rejig those. Twenty six. Oh, <laughs> throwing them around. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Twenty nine. Thirty. Um, thirty one. Thirty two. Same things happen with those. <laughs> 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. No problems, so I can spread these out a bit. Even more so like to have them organized in a way that's pleasing to me in terms of how evenly distributed they are <laughs> there's no more rhyme or reason to what I'm doing right now than that <laughs> there we are that will do so there we have it gnome carolers is all kitted up um yeah as I said earlier check out my Instagram if you're interested in seeing more up-to-date information on what I'm working on like when I start working on this I'll get some pictures up that kind of thing I'm going to be posting an update on house on a cliff as well when I take it off my easel later and do check out my TikTok as well if you like that kind of thing so thank you for watching um yeah I'll see you next time bye